Hello team and welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself Jonathan MS Pierce. This is the Ukraine War Frontline Update for the 16th of July 2023. Let's get straight to the front line to the northeast sector that is Kupiansk to Svatva to Kremina on uh, my map that is looking like this, this is Ukraine. Uh, we're going to zoom into that northeast sector just to give you the understanding of how my map works for those who are new to the channel. I have Three lines going on in most of the map. Red line indicates the pro-Russian mapper, Syriac maps, a blue line, the pro-Ukrainian mapper, Andrew Perpetua. Both of these represent Russian defensive lines. The white line is a Russian defensive line as of the 30th of May, so before the counter-offensive started, as according to a third mapper, deep state map, pro-Ukrainian mapper. So you can compare like a, a pro-Russian and pro-Ukrainian source against where we think the Russian lines were previously. Now, it, sometimes there are gains on a daily basis that don't show as as changes to the Russian defensive line because it's gains of consolidation for the Ukrainians, for example, within the grey zone. The grey zone is the area between the Russian defensive lines and the Ukrainian defensive lines. And there's a kind of no man's land in, in between. And the Ukrainians can make some gains in there, but it won't show as gains on the uh, map for the Russian defensive lines and vice versa. Um, so, well, actually, no, that will change. So the Russians make gains defensively and consolidate. That will show. Okay, so... Uh, there has been a lot of talk about this Kupiansk to Svatva to Kremina front line. There have been rumours that the Russians have amassed some 180,000 troops in the whole area. Of course, this is quite a large area, and those troops will also include all the logis logistics people, uh, command and control, artillery men, all sorts behind the lines. But they have a significant presence in this area and are making some gains, perhaps, in the Kupiansk area, perhaps in the Kuzumivka area, just to the northwest of Svatova. We go to the ISW Institute for the Study of War American Military Think Tank. They say Russian forces conducted offensive operations and made limited territorial gains near Svatova on July the 15th. Geolocated footage published on July the 15th shows that unspecified Russian infantry advanced slightly in Novoselivska. Let's go and have a look at that footage. That footage, oops, is not there. It is is oops here it is uh movement filmed in the remains of kuzumivka train station around uh this location so the russians are here i don't think this is going to show any gains from what we have or what i have on my map here uh, but we will see so this is going into novoselivska uh and the russians have indeed advanced this was gray zone previously the russians control that so that confirms what we have already known for now probably over two days that the russians have advanced through kuzumivka and into the very edge of novoselivska so i think that's confirmatory it's nothing new there are no new advances in my opinion there uh, but there is still fierce fighting taking place um the ISW continues that they the Russians hold entrenched positions along the railway road near the settlement. The Ukrainian General Staff reported Russian forces conducted unsuccessful offensive operations south of Novoselivska. A uh, Russian mill blogger claimed that Russians have seized or are trying to seize a tactical height near Novoselivska and clear Ukrainian forces from the forests to the south of the settlement. So this is Kuzumivka, and we have... Um, the, it depends what you mean by forest to the south. You've got a lot of tree lines. I don't know that there are large forests in that particular area, just a lot of uh, tree lines. If you want more wooded areas, then you have to go towards uh, Kuzumivka, where I would say that is under Russian control anyway. Um, but you, you get the idea. As far as um, heights are concerned, it's uh, difficult to see. That there are too many heights around here you see it kind of does go uphill so i've talked previously how novoselivka sits on higher ground than kuzumivka but it's not it's not like massively you know raised as you can see there just ever so slightly higher than kuzumivka um but nevertheless those are still will indicate ad advantageous positions uh, and that you know the heights are to the south and to the west um, here. So anyway, uh, activity taking place there. 
no report says of the whole kind of Kupiansk axis. A lot of talks about Kupiansk. Yes, Russians do attack in areas mainly north of Kupiansk near Liman Pershi, which has always been a Russian dominant grey zone, and Persia Travnevi. Apart from Maziatifka, no further gains are made yet monitoring the situation. So that is to go, if we come out from Novosilivska, there's just, you know, talk about activity around here. Maziatifka was this kind of area, a couple of houses in, in that area, but they're saying, no reports saying no advances really since then. There's activity around there. Surat Maps, a pro-Russian mapper, has this large salient, or relatively large salient, for the Ukra for the Russians here. Although Andrew Perpetua doesn't have that and has never really ha had that. There were talks about these advances towards Kupiansk, and then not a lot uh, has been heard since then. So I, I can't verify that that salient exists for the Russians. Uh, it would be worryingly close to Kupiansk. But yeah, just don't know. I doubt it's solid Russian control. Uh, could well be just a grey zone. But then as we come further to the south, uh, what do we have to say? Um, Milbologa claimed that Russian nor Ukrainian forces control Novosilivska. This is going back to Novosilivska. Sorry to flip around. And uh, the movement in the settlement is due, it's difficult due to a lack of shelter and Ukrainian drone activity. Um, the Russians claim they stopped a Ukrainian drone attack near Kuzumivka. Cherovati, the spokesperson for the Ukrainians, reported that Russian forces are most active in Kupiansk and Liman directions. So this is an active front line. The Ukrainians are seemingly attacking back in, in this area of Kuzumivka, where the Russians did make some gains over the last week. Uh, we'll see how that develops. And as we come down here, you know, some of the usual places mentioned, Nevska, Terny, Torska. Uh, we'll come and see what they have to say about these places. Um just to mention that this morning, I think it is, uh, a place called Yuvelini. So I'll, uh, that is in Luhansk. I'll just do a bit of a uh, geolocation for that. So yeah, here, here it is. I'll just point it out. It is uh, still in Luhansk, but or blast, but it is quite a long way away from where we're talking about. But that has been hit near Luhansk uh, city itself. What has happened? Well, a coal miner at Yuvelini has been massively struck by Ukrainian forces this morning. It has been a vital logistics hub for Russian forces in the areas in the area for a long time, just outside of Gimla's range, but within now range of uh, Storm Shadow. Uh, got hit today, a huge garrison and an important command and control node. The Russians like to set up in and around mines. It's very likely that the use of the mines is somewhat protected. So he's talked about that previously in November last year. Uh, that has been hit big time uh, today. Uh, but anyway, as we, uh, so I've just sort of distracted myself. We're going to come back to the Torska area and just this salient to the west of Kremina. Um, if we come down, so uh, the mill bloggers are claiming that Ukrainian forces are active within the forests of Crimea and are attacking, but also that the Ukrainians claim that the, they are, uh, you know, there are unsuccessful Russian attacks in the same place. So you hear this quite often that one side claims the other is attacking, the other side claims the other one is. Uh, Russian MOD is claiming that Russian forces repelled two Ukrainian attacks near Makivka, Torska, um, and that Russian forces, a Russian mill bloggers claimed that the Russians have advanced near Torska in a forest near Kremina, although there's not enough detail there, uh, and that the claims that Russian forces have advanced towards Yampolivka has come from other mill bloggers as well. There's currently no reliable information on control of terrain around Torska. So this is Torska. Uh, you've got Yampolivka nearby, uh, just to the north of there between Terny and Torska. So there could be advances for the Russians there or here, or this could be referring to the claims from two to three days ago that have since been sort of walked back. Um, there are, yeah, no really good quality data. There's no good quality data coming out of this area other than the kind of general claims from each side. Um, we have seen some gains for the Russians in the forest, but there is active fighting around the Brover and in a forest area still. Uh, Pro-Russian mapper Syriac maps here showing some, you might say gains for Ukraine, but it's more likely to be reworking the front lines a little bit. So just a tiny bit of area there for in favor of the Ukrainians. It's still tough fighting around uh, um, Bilohorivka here. The, both mappers 
disagree quite a bit on the control, which I think is significant. I would say probably this is all grey zone around here and just fierce fighting that's taken place for a long time. Ukrainians have the heights uh, over here that, that helps. In fact, let's see if the um, Google map can show us any of the heights, particularly around this area. So you can see, yeah, you can see, hopefully make out that this is in a dip there. Um, yeah, you can see the mines uh, coming down into this area. And you've got quite a lot of raised land that the Ukrainians have control over here uh, and to the north as well, um, over here and to the uh, west. So if we come out of there, the Russians are going to be coming down into this dip where the sort of town of Belarivka is. Everywhere around it overlooks Belarivka, and by all accounts, it has been pretty much uh, reduced to rubble. There are, she's on a slight incline there, there are basements in these houses that allow people to take shelter. Uh, the, the Ukrainians historically have been in there taking shelter underneath, uh, but it's been consistently hit by artillery for a long time now. So, yeah, just to give you an un a slight understanding of what the physical geography is of this area, um, as you can see, that big dip in there uh, where that quarry is. Right, uh, coming out of that then, so no, no particular news coming out of there, just giving you a dip into the physical geography. We come down to Bakhmut, and there's quite a lot of talk about what's going on in Bakhmut. I haven't heard too much about what's going on in Solodar. There were some good gains for the Ukrainians yesterday in that northern area. Uh, Deep State Map has some gains. The Deep State Map is now the yellow line here, showing some gains compared to their own mapping from the 30th of May. Some gains here just on their mapping yesterday but they are 48 hours plus behind in terms of operational security so it's probably one to just yeah okay there's been some movement there but we already kind of knew that looking at Andrew Perpetua's map and Syriac map so both kind of agree with that anyway and then we come to Berkivka here where the Ukrainians have been pushed back uh, over the last few days they had got into got some gains and taken the southern or were operating in the southern outskirts of Bakivka. They have since been pushed back. As you can see, there's a difference between the two main mappers here in who controls what in that area. Let's go to the different sources uh, concerning Bakhmut. Uh, but first of all, we'll we'll look at what um, ISW says about that area. Uh, general comments about Bakhmut by Cherovati here, the Ukrainian spokesperson, is that Ukrainian forces maintain the initiative there. Russian um, for sources claim that Russian forces made limited advancing on Bakhmut's northern and southern flanks. So this is both in Bakivka and in the south as well. And I've not heard this sort of anywhere else. There's been a lot of talk about Ukrainian gains in the south. Uh, ISW says and continues to respond to Ukrainian counteroffenses by committing elite units to defend Bakhmut's flanks on July the 15th. A Kremlin-affiliated mill blogger claimed that Russian forces successfully counterattacked west and northwest of Klyshchivka and recaptured 500 metres of territory. It's not something that I've seen widely discussed. The Ukrainian general staff reported that Russian forces unsuccessfully launched assaults southwest of Andrivka and in the Bakivka area. Now, I know that Bakivka, the Russians have pushed the Ukrainians back a little bit recently, so that I would say that that is possibly confirmed. The Kremlin affiliated mill blogger, uh, another one, claimed that Russian forces unsuccessfully counterattacked unsuccessfully counterattack near Bakivka. So you can see the fog of war, there's so many different uh, claims being made from both sides, and the Ukrainian forces were able to retain their positions. I've not again heard that from anywhere else so you know it is pretty confusing and then the rest of this is is interesting i won't kind of repeat it all read it all but it's the idea that, that the russians are pulling in bars elite forces vdv chechen akhmat spetsnaz units and other elements of spetsnaz special forces both north and south of bakhmut uh, as the rsw says it indicates that the ukrainian counteroffensives in the bakhmut direction are continuing to trigger the deployment of further reinforcements predominantly from the luhansk front line so where they do have forces amassing in the luhansk area they are seemingly bringing a number of different elements of that and possibly forces from Abdivka and other areas to Bakhmut to help uh, defend the city and, it, and its flanks. Now, as we come to the south of Bakhmut, 
there are gains, as according to Syriac Maps, uh, some some surreptitious ones. So JR, who's helping me with with the mapping and does the uh, Syriac Maps line for me on a daily basis, and I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, the ones with dots on dots on, I think are the the gains that they have kind of admitted to openly like with it so they have uh things like their maps that they put put out here and the ones without uh um dots is just a bit of surreptitious changing the map but not really shouting about it they actually haven't got uh, too much they shout about other than bakivka there and then some elements of attacking and then uh, you know running off or, or retreating after a, a counter-attack fails, so on and so forth. So what Surat Map says is you, that in the Bakhmut front during the last 24 hours, a Russian army expelled the Ukrainians from the southern outskirts of Bakivka. On the other hand, the situation in Klitschukka remains practically unchanged. Ukrainian army managed to penetrate the first Russian defensive line and reach the urban limits to the town, but the attack was repelled. On the other hand, Russian troops withdrew again from some of the hills in order to avoid more casualties due to Ukrainian artillery. So this is going against other Russian claims that there has been a successful counterattack. Now, uh, the I think Andrew Pepech is correct here. I think the Ukrainians just control the heights behind uh, Klitschivka and are not really needing to go into the town too much because they have the advantage of the height and can take pot shots at the, uh, the Russians uh, without the risk of losing too many casualties themselves. So I think it's only a matter of time before the Russians retreat from Klitschivka. I think it's fairly untenable to hold that. Andrew Perpetua says this area here to the east of the canal that the Ukrainians took over the last 48 hours or so is now consolidated. So the Ukrainians really do control this area uh, much more you know, robustly and are pushing towards Andrivka. And there's talk you know, of successful moves towards Kurdyumivka and Andrivka. And there's been rumor of bridging across the canal uh, somewhere but I, I don't know I have, I've only just heard that I want to find I don't really want to tell you that has happened until I've got good visual confirmation of that but just to let you know that that is a rumor and that would be really significant because it a shows that they'll be able to take across um, mechanized equipment but also means that they're confident enough to put bridging in place that because it won't get hit by artillery fire. And I don't know that they've really uh, degraded the Russian artillery enough in the area to uh, to confidently do that. Anyway, that is the situation in uh, Bakhmut generally. Let's go to some sources. Bakhmut Demon, who's fighting there, says, we have extremely good success in Kurdyumivka. Okay, might indicate the assaults south of Klitschivka and towards Andrivka are going well. And then as well, Osman, who also fights in the area, a volunteer for the 24th Idar Battalion, uh, confirms that the 3rd Separate Assault Brigade in the area has done a good job yesterday. 3rd Separate Assault Brigade did a good job today, organisation, coordination and efficiency at the highest level. So things are looking good and it's sounding good in the area. Uh, Peter Clifford says that that the Ukrainians are progressing along the Donetsk Donbass Canal towards Klitschivka and Andrivka villages. Um, and uh, that no report says here Russians are bringing in reinforcements to the area, the Klitschivka, Andrivka, Kurdymivka line. It won't help them. Ukraine literally controls all the heights and strategic points. It's a bit like shooting fish in a barrel. Uh, so, it, you know, while there are some Russian sources claiming that, you know, they are repelling and maybe retaking ground. I don't think that's the case. I think the Ukrainians are doing a fairly good job, particularly in the southern flank. They may find it a little bit more difficult in Bakivka. Uh, sorry, Bakivka. And uh, they might be making advances up here, but it's a bit of operational security. Uh, but certainly the southern flank is looking good for them. And if they can move into Kurdy Mivko, you might see that today. You might see some moves towards Andrivka across these uh, fields today that will help to put pressure on Klitschivka. Uh, and once the Russians pull out of there, then it's really looking like, you know, putting, uh, uh, giving the Russian reserve line here along this road something to think about uh, and a chance to interdict this main supply route into the south. Uh, but Bakhmut itself apparently is being hammered as well. Uh, and as the as Hannah Mali has previously said, the deputy defense minister, the the Russians are unable to move, as according to Ukrainians, around Bakhmut, in and out of Bakhmut, uh, due to the fire control that the, the Ukrainians have. Now, if you take what the claims are of Zaporizhia and apply it to Bakhmut, that the Ukrainians have 2.5 times the artillery uh, round, rounds being fired, 
than the Russians that's in Zaporizhia. If it's anything like that around Bakhmut, that will have a serious impact on Russian activities there. So it'll be interesting to see what the comparative uh, artillery usage is in the Bakhmut areas. They have been seriously degraded. That We know that lots of self-propelled mortars have been taken out over time around here, uh, and that artillery is continuing to be uh, targeted uh, as Ukraine have the range advantage there. Okay, as we come down now from Bakhmut, we come towards uh, Avdivka. There, I don't have anything to say about Avdivka as far as any other sources other than what the ISW says, which is pretty much limited offensive operations around there. No one made any territorial gains. Uh, all the usual places mentioned, per the um, it, it appears that the Russians are still trying to pressure northwards from Opitny and Vodjanye and as well as westwards from Pisky through to Pervomysky. Those are still the axes of their uh, attempted advances, but they are finding it really difficult and they keep kind of you know, receding in their control in that Pervomysky area. Okay, let's come out, uh, come down past Marienka. Not too much to report about Marienka. And then uh, come on to the southern Donetsk and on towards Zaporizhia front lines. Now we look at a kind of general overview uh, so if we just kind of zoom out, we have uh, Donetsk Vukhledai over there. Don't know too much about any activity taking place there. There was talk about some activity towards Yeharivka from Pavlivka. Uh, and, and I'll go to that first as we just get this larger overview. So uh, there is this. So morning update from Wargonzo. So this is a pro-Russian source. So first of all, the, let's go in reverse, actually. We're going to start over here at Yeharivka, Pavlivka area. So the Ukrainians apparently took several positions southwest of Pavlivka aiming for Yeharivka. So this is according to Wargonzo. I don't have any more detail other than that. But here's Yeharivka uh, and here's Pavlivka. And we've seen fighting going on here for some time. The Ukrainians did get a little bit of purchase to the southwest of Pavlivka. So we know that they are, they are present there and... Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a case of going through Pavlivka. So it could be that the Ukrainians are now taking some positions in this area uh, there. But that is kind of all the detail I have. Uh, that's coming from Morgonzo. Then the Ukrainians have advanced along the railway west of Dr Dr Drozhnyanka. We'll have a look at that a little bit later. And then indeed some activity around Kamyanska as well. And again, we'll check that out later. Uh, bear that in mind. So we're going to go now from Pavlivka over to Velika Novosilka. That's this salient to the west, where you can see there are some gains both from both mappers. The dark blue is gains as according to Suryat maps. A little surreptitious gain. It's no, no, not announced by them, but a change to their mapping. And then Andrew Perpetua again there around Stara Mirolska. And indeed, there's a lot of news coming out around Stara Mirolska or about that today. There was apparently yesterday a, a failed attack on Urujani, according to Nor reports. So Ukrainians' attack on Urujani didn't work out. Coming from the eastern flank, uh, an attack going around the town was repelled. Reportedly, Russian troops managed to take advantage of the grey zone around Novodonetska, making Ukrainian positions unfavorable to hold so this is an attack around there but again this could be you know when you hear about that that might have been like two or three days ago you just it's so difficult to know the timeline for anything any of the claims that come out so because we are hearing today that Stara Mioska has now been liberated and is under R Ukrainian control that is really significant uh, uh, because then it allows Urijani to be basically flanked from three three sides there's talk that the Ukrainians on the outskirts of Novodonetska as well and we know that they're knocking on door to Priyutne too. So this is perhaps a really good sign for the Ukrainians going forward because if, if they can take these positions then it's really going on to Staromilnyivka. Uh, it's after that that you start seeing the first big trenches that we see around Robotna uh, further to the west. And obviously th this area, there are still lots of trenches built into the fields all over the place. Every single tree line will have trenches built in. But the, the kind of main network the larger trench networks uh, as a kind of almost continuous trench network exists or line exists south of Staromilnyivka. So you would expect you know, if Staromilnyivka falls, that Urujani would fall fairly quickly for the Ukrainians and it would be a somewhat quicker advance. I say that, but then all of these fields will be mined and they will contain uh, trench networks within them. So it's just, it is really difficult, isn't it? Uh, so that is the situation 
as according to another reports yesterday, and then since then, Gherkin, Eagle, Evil Gherkin has said that Ukrainian defense forces are taking positions in Staromyorska, a contested territory, in a Berdyansk direction. Uh, however, the only trustworthy source of the Ukrainian army hasn't spoken about it yet, uh, so we're likely to see more conflicting messaging about that. Well, actually, another Russian mill blogger, Romanov, has reported that Staromyorsky, south of Veliko Novosilka, is under Ukrainian control. Several days ago, we reported that the Ukrainians had indeed entered the outskirts of the uh, the town or the village and that uh, fighting was ongoing so awaiting visual confirmation and then andrew perpetua says that romanov has claimed again that ukraine has captured star Mayorsk. he says this would fit in line with what he sees as there being intense but real emphasis on that shelling around star Mayorsk for the last three days or so so the ukrainians with their two and a half times shell firing advantage over the Russians have been absolutely hammering Staromyorska and that's Andrew Perpetua saying that with uh, recourse to satellite imagery evidence so that's been absolutely hammered uh, and you would imagine that it would be really difficult for the Russians to remain there uh, personally I would just take the, uh, a leaf out of the Russians book in places like this you're just going to have to I and mean, it sounds horrible because they're Ukrainians own villages but somewhere like that just hammer it with all the artillery and time mines you can get your hands on and force the Russians to pull out and this is indeed these are the tactics that people like Thomas Tyner was talking about when you are doing your counter-offensive maneuvers you have to just bring everything to bear at these lines and then give the Russians no chance, uh, hammer them, uh, move in, and then do that to the next place and do that until the Russians capitulate. Uh, and that that would be that would appear to be what's kind of taking place there. Um, so that is Veliko Novosilka axis. But as according to War Gonzo, there is activity around uh, Dorozhnyanka. We'll move on to look at that then. So we have some gains for the Ukrainians there. And you can see the difference between the 30th of May and now. So in some places, that's going to look uh, uh, pretty much a seven kilometer gain. Doesn't sound like a huge amount, but it's 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 hard fought over, isn't it? We come to the west and Dorozhnyanka, there could be uh, some gains along the what, it's kind of the railway lines. I don't know where the railway line is around there. Ah, oh, here it is. There's a railway line there coming up here. So it could be that Ukrainians have made some uh, advances down this railway line. That is, again, just this very generalized uh, claim about what Wargonzo is saying. So Ukrainians have advanced along the railway line west of Dorozhnyanka. Uh, and uh, yeah, again, not heard anything else about that, but it could be good news for Ukrainians there. And then we come to the west of there and we can see gains, as according to Andrew Perpetua, right around Robotina. Uh, this has been long in the making, been waiting for these gains to be more forthcoming. The Ukrainians have uh, negotiated themselves past the main trench line, the first line of proper trenches that goes along that kind of road area there. Uh, they are now past that and coming down south and looking like they're enveloping uh, Robotna more considerably both from the the north the east and the west so some fairly considerable gains there or at least kind of confirming these claims that like oh ukrainians have made 300 meters 200 meters 700 meters whatever and then suddenly yeah okay we can we can see that evidence by in this case andrew perpetua and his recourse to uh to shelling in the area um so that is really good news for the Ukrainians there, that they we're starting to see evidence or the fruits of their efforts. And then around Zherebyanki, I don't know too much about that other than around here, Kamyansky or Kamyansky here. Uh, the Ukrainians have attacked east of the M18 or the E105 east of Kamyansky and took up new important positions. Now, I've not seen that on my map at all or any of the mappers I've looked at, but this is coming out fairly recently, there could be this effort to uh, come to the west of Zeribyanki and down through here. But this is traditionally, this settlement has been separated by the river and the Ukrainians controlling the north, the Russians controlling the south. So it could be some movement there. And then we come on to this source that's just come out, another tactical success to, by Ukrainians in Zaporizhia. They have widened the front west of Piatichatki and probably will try to force a Russian retreat from Kamyanska. So this is building on 
the claims about the M18 highway, uh, so in the Zaporizhia direction, the armed forces of Ukraine attacked from the side of Kamiansky, just to the east of the M18 highway, managed to take a number of important positions. So that is that that same claim. Uh, so exactly where that is, I don't know, but you're starting to see a few bits of movement that if you're pro-Ukrainian, that will give you a bit of uh, bit of hope because it has been fairly you know, short on territorial exchanges or territorial gains for the Ukrainians recently. And then uh, we come on to Kherson. The ISW says about the activity on Dnipro River around the Antonivsky Bridge that Russian sources claim that Ukrainian forces continue to operate on the left bank of uh, the Dnipro near the Antonivsky Bridge and did not claim any Russian or Ukrainian advances in the area. Kherson Oblast Occupation Head, uh, so that's a Russian side, claimed that Ukrainian forces continue to hold positions near the bridge and that Russian forces repel all Ukrainian attempts to cross. Uh, a Kremlin affiliate in Mill Blogger claimed that Russian forces repel five or six uh, five of six small Ukrainian boats from landing on the east bank of the Dnipro. So one boat did get across. Uh, that, that's a claim that that kind of stuff is going to be happening all the time. Uh, here's another source saying Russians are trying to prevent the landing of Ukrainian troops on the left bank of the Dnipro. Ukraine's military media center said the enemy's main efforts in the operational area in, uh, are focused on this. In order to avoid the advance of Ukrainian troops, the Russians moved marine units to the occupied town of Leshki. Uh, and then we have, uh, throughout this week, Ukrainian forces destroyed over 10 Russian boats. That's Hannah Malia, the Deputy Defense Minister in the Southern Operation Command's area of responsibility where the front line crosses the Dnipro River. Counter-battery warfare continues. Uh, and then we have Radu Hossi. I was talking about this this morning in my news piece. He's done a kind of update. He's actually in the Kherson area near Oleshki. And he's saying, so he's a... Uh, Romanian analyst, but he does a lot of humanitarian work in the area. And he's saying that I've seen it with my own eyes, heard it, lived it in the past week. Um, he says that uh, Chuck Farrer's map is correct, which shows gains to the Ukrainians or shows certain things in the area of Antonitsky Bridge. Now, he isn't the most reliable, to be honest. Uh, lots of other OSINT, um, OSINT sources generally... Uh, call out some of Chuck Farrer's claims. So I would take that with a pinch of salt. But he's the Hosu is there and saying it's correct in this instance. Russian artillery strikes have destroyed house 200 meters away from me, approximately where it appears on his map. He says several infantry um, units have crossed the Dnipro towards Oleshki. The Ukrainians are preparing things, and this is the important bit. The Ukrainians are preparing things in Oleshki and southwest of Oleshki, but plans love silence. So I'll stop there. Uh, because there are things I have seen with my own eyes. In other words, there could well be something being prepared for this uh, Kherson Oblast front, this Dnipro River front. So although there's been no changes to territory around the Antonivsky Bridge, there is still this foothold that the Ukrainians have. They're still moving troops across there, it seems. And there, are, we know that there are troops around this area, uh, that are amassing. There have been claims from both the Russian MOD, but also there have been some uh, confirmations of this from Ukrainian sources. So it really does look like there might be some Kherson, uh, you know, Kherson maneuver that will give the Russians a lot to think about. If they can get equipment across the river in large quantities, then suddenly the Russians are having to think about multiple axes uh, concerning their defence, uh, eventually, really, of Crimea there, but of, of the southern oblast. So, yeah, I think um, interesting to see how Kherson develops. That's a frontline update. I, I think generally things are looking positive for Ukraine. It's about reaching this tipping point in terms of degradation of Ukrainian, uh, of, of Russian forces in the area. Uh, we are seeing just this general uh, taking out of Russian logistics. I mean, the ISW talks about this here. Ukrainian forces continue their interdiction campaign in southern Ukraine. Geolocated footage published two days ago shows Ukrainian strikes on naval infantry elements in the Caspian flotilla moving in a convoy northwest of Tokmak. Russian sources claim that Ukrainian forces conducted a missile strike near a railway bridge near Chernihivka in Zaporizhia, so on and so forth. This kind of stuff is happening all the time. We've heard of Tokmak being hit today, Berdyansk being hit today. Just consistent degradation of the Russian capability and capacity in this whole southern region. And at some point, 
you know, things will break, I'm sure. you got Russian morale. There are other videos coming out that I've just been seeing of other troops complaining, no ammunition, no food, no water, no command, no decent command being sent to their deaths. Morale is, is rock bottom. Um, you've got commanders being killed. You've got commanders being dismissed because they're voicing their concerns about the situation. Counter-battery fire being complained about, being non-existent for the Russians. Uh, they don't have the range on their artillery. They don't have the ammunition because that's been uh, hit, uh, logistics have been hit, so on and so forth. So at some point, I think things will look good for a proper Ukrainian counteroffensive. But am I being too hopeful? I don't know. I'm just trying to piece the, piece the jigsaw together here. Let me know what you think. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. Take care. I'll speak to you later. Sayonara.